Good morning, everybody. Um, we're climbing up Clingman's Dome. Um, we have uh, started before the sun came out. I don't know if you can see the ridge over there. It's starting to show up. The sun's coming up. Clingman Stone is the highest point in the AT. We're going up now. You can see we're above the clouds. So we'll be up about 6,000 feet. It's going to be a fun day. We also hit 200 miles today. Although it's a beautiful day when we started heading up Clingman Stone, we cannot describe the magnitude of the thunder and lightning and hailstorm that came through in the early morning hours before we set out. I know this looks like snow or ice, but this is hail from last night. And we're walking all in here. This is all pockets of hail. We, the trail is just a frozen stream bed, so we've been wearing our uh, stable ice traction and they've been worth every penny. what we meant by this uh, circular uh, tower that goes all the way up to the observation deck. So this is actually an area that um, people can drive up to, sort of similar to Mount Washington. They can drive up to the top of Mount Washington summit, uh, go to the summit. Here, when they get to the summit though, people with uh, physical disabilities are allowed, to, you know, enabled to get up and see um, from the top of the, above the top of the mountains. That must be the road up, huh? As beautiful as the sights were, we really wanted to stay up there and look around. But to be honest with you, it was pretty cold and we knew we had many miles to continue if we were going to finish the day at Newfound Gap. And so we came back down and stopped at the bottom, had something to eat, and then continued our hike off of Clingman Stone towards Mount Collins. The hike down was beautiful, slippery, muddy, icy, but pretty much standard fare for what we had been dealing with. We went along for most of the rest of the day, enjoying the warmth and the sun.
as we hiked out, I happened to look down at our gut hook app, which tells us where we are on the trail, and I watched it. It switched from 199.9 to 200. So there we were. We had to stop, make a 200, and continue on. And just past the summit of Mount Collins, no slouch of a mountain itself, we stopped for lunch. After lunch, we continued on our way. After Klingman's Dome, then into Mount Collins, we were headed for Newfound Gap when we came to the Beach Forest Exclosure. It's an exclosure. What they're attempting to do here is by fences and gates and ramps and traps is to keep the invasive presence of the wild boar that's been around since the 1950s from knocking out delicate tree species in the area. It's amazing how much work they've done not sure how successful it's been, but their efforts are to be admired. Before you know it, we arrived at the North Carolina-Tennessee state line, an area called Newfound Gap, filled with tourists enjoying the beautiful day. The crowds actually were somewhat unsettling, but worse, we were unable to arrange a ride into town because the late hour of the day that we got there. And that's when we were struck by trail hunter. We are in the back of a pickup truck. Picked up by a... Passed through hiker. A 2008 hiker. And they are gracious enough that they are taking us to our hotel and then taking us out to dinner. And we will introduce them to them. Suppose we have to make the following disclaimer. Children, do not try this at home. We are not trained professionals. We're riding in the back of an open back pickup truck 14 miles down curvy roads into Gatlinburg. But sometimes a hiker's got to do what a hiker's got to do. Everybody, <laughs> we're at the back of a pickup truck going by a 2008 hiker, and he's giving us a ride into Gatlinburg on these back. Holy cow! <laughs> Smoky Mountain Roads. <laughs> And after a 14 mile ride down the mountains, we came into Gatlinburg. What a change of environment. There's the Texas Roadhouse. Yeah, we're behind you, David. And so meet our trail angels, Kanadi and Janice. Kanadi was a 2008 through hiker. I believe his name was a, from a Cherokee word that meant lucky hunter. We were the lucky ones this day. These two great folks picked us up at Newfound Gap, drove us into town, dropped us off at the hotel, and then came back and took us out to dinner. They live over in Knoxville. And it was like meeting two people we had known for a long, long time, but we met them for the first time. We can't tell you how much we appreciated their great trail magic. After we said our farewells to Janice and Kanadi, we went for a walk around Gatlinburg, the first of a lot of walks we would take. It was kind of a jarring contrast to the quiet of the mountains, but we were happy to be there. It was exciting. And we were really happy to find the Dunkin' Donuts. But by the next morning, things began to change. That's when the snow came in. 
and that's when we began to count the days here at the Days Inn Gatlinburg, room 130. It was kind of an odd experience because for a few days while we were in Gatlinburg, it was beautiful. But when you looked up into the mountains, you could see the different story that was taking place up there. We heard all of the reports from hikers coming through, text messages and phone calls of what they were experiencing. We were glad to be warm and safe and dry, but we were anxious to be back on the trail. And so if you missed our special report, Gatlinburg, we would suggest that just check it out. It tells you the complete story of what took place in Gatlinburg. But while we were there, we checked out the sites and uh, the curious culture of Gatlinburg. It was a day that we walked up and down the strip, up and down the strip. We got some chores done. It was necessary to get laundry done, and the closest laundry was about three miles away. So we took the public transportation trolley, which turned out to be a really cheap tour bus. We talked to some of the interesting people along the strip as well. And we gained some very important information from reading the T-shirts and signs in the windows of Gatlinburg. We walked up. And we walked down. We walked up and we walked down and we resupplied. We resupplied our food. We got ready. We got ready again. Rumors went back and forth that we could leave at any moment. We fixed our gear. Now others with us spent some more creative ways of killing time, but we chose to eat a lot. <laughs> Southern food is amazing. And as suspected, we think hiking is making Grandma Shorty shorter. And then at night on the 22nd, we got the word. In the morning, we'd be leaving room 130 and head back for the trail.